Hello everyone, this is Debbie Henderson from Debbie's Designs. Welcome to my afternoon tea time on a card. It feels kind of weird to say afternoon tea time because uh, this is actually a rescheduled class from yesterday. I'm so happy to see you guys here. I can see you all coming on. So I'm going to just make a few announcements. So you guys, I'm still, this is my first day with my webcam. I'm still playing with my settings. So I'm hoping, I just found another setting for the white, the bright white that was showing up in my workshop today. And I hope I have that fixed. So we'll see. I'm playing with my settings each time I use this. So we'll get it right. So let me just make a few announcements. Tomorrow, uh, Saturday, we have World Card Making Day. And it'll be on this page, the Stamp and Ink Designs Group on Facebook. We start at 8 a.m. Eastern Time and we go all the way to uh, 11 o'clock p.m. So make sure you join us. And if there's some sessions that you can't join in, they will be there for you to watch later. So you can join in any time. Today started the designer series paper sale, so make sure you check that out in the online store because a lot of our designer paper packs are 15% off. So that's all I have for announcements. Now I'm doing two projects with you today and I did talk about calendars. So I'm going to tell you where I order my calendars and there may be some better places out there that you guys can find. But I've been ordering uh, my calendars from the same company for quite a few years now and it's just great pa uh, price on multiples and also uh, she's quick at shipping them. So vippies.com, V-I-P-P-I-E-S, that's where I get my calendars. Um, she actually has three sizes and the one that I'm using that I always buy, let me just dig out my ruler here. So these actually measure um, three inches by two and a quarter. So that's what I'm using on the projects for today. And she has different quantities that you can buy. So there are other companies out there, but this is the one that I've always used. So my first card for today, I'm actually using a swap that I received quite a while ago. It was like last fall. And this was the card. And it's actually an easel calendar. I really like, and I don't know who made this. It was a swap card with no name on it. But I really thought it was cute that she used one of the large pearls as the little easel stopper that holds the card there. And then you could write a message. But I'm doing mine a little different today. This is the one I'm going to be creating with you. I'm actually using, let me grab the paper. I'm using the Magic and the Night paper. Now you can see when you look at this project, you can't tell that this is Halloween paper. That's because Stamping Up is so smart when it comes to the Halloween paper. Not everyone loves Halloween. So if you, these are all with bats or cobwebs, spiders, and these two actually you could use both sides. But if you flip these four over that are more Halloween themed, then you get sides that you can use for non-Halloween projects. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm using this uh, flowered sheet here with you. So let me show you what I'm using for supplies. I'm using the Playing With Paper, uh, Playing With Patterns Resin Dots. I'm actually using that on both projects today. Peaceful Moments Stamp Set. And I'm actually using Life is Better with a Friend Like You. And for the inside, wishing you every happiness this special day will bring. So I haven't shown you the inside yet. So this is the outside where I've outlined the calendar with a piece of cardstock. There's my designer paper. Now I'm going to try to bring this up and hopefully you can see. I used Wink of Stella on the flowers. And I don't know if that's going to, yeah, I can see it's shimmering. Look how shimmery that is. Isn't that pretty? And then I opted to add the sentiment on the inside for my stopper with a bow. So this is the one we're making. And I'm, I'm going to use different 
a different color today. So if you want to copy this one, this is Highland Heather. The one I'm making with you today is Magenta Madness. So let me bring all of my little pieces out. Okay, and here's my little bow. Now the bow comes from the glittered organdy ribbon. You can see it's got speckles of glitter in it. Little sparkly glitters of silver and glitter. So now let's get started. I'm going to bring my scoring tool in. Now I'm sure most of you guys have made an easel card before. An easel card comes in two pieces. You have the piece that's fully extended like this one and you make two score lines and then you have the piece on the front that's glued. If you're new to stamping, one, an easel card is one of the first card folds that you learn. So we're going to score at two and three quarter and five and a half. And the object of an easel fold, we're going to score on both lines or fold on both lines. And then you need to create so that the other piece stands up, it's going to look like an easel. And this is what it looks like when it's in a sideways view. We're going to glue Whisper White. Now I have two pieces. One goes on the inside and then one goes on the layer on the front. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this one to the inside. Because this one has no stamping on it. We're just going to glue everything that's on there. It's going to go on the inside and then this is going to fold over for the easel. We're going to bring in another piece of Magenta Madness, five and a half by four and a quarter. And we don't want to glue the whole thing on there because we want it to be able to fold open and close. So what you're going to do is take the front of your folded panel, so the first section, we're going to add adhesive. And then we're going to glue that evenly with the edges. And there's how the easel portion works. So now you can see it's ready to stand up once we add all of the other layers. Oh, Barb Eichel, you've never made an easel card. She thinks she never made one. They're so easy. you got to make one. Now, designer paper. Again, this is the, the piece with, actually you could use this side too. It's kind of non-Halloween, but I like the flowers. And this measures two and a half by four. So we're going to glue that on the second piece of white. I can't wait to show you guys project number two. This is kind of just an easy project to work my way in. And then number two is going to be the wow the WOW project. Now let me just trim a little bit of designer paper. I can see some right on the edge here. And we're going to wrap the ribbon. Let me bring my card in so you guys can see it. We're going to wrap the ribbon around at the top of the designer paper. So we're going to add glue on both sides. And that's going to go right on top. We're going to wrap that around. And then I'm going to cut this off after I unglue my fingers from the back. It's going to wrap around. So there's, whoops, I pulled on it. There's our ribbon around the front. So now this is ready to be glued. And that's going to go on the front portion that goes up and down. Now I'm going to bring in my sentiment and I'm using the Tuxedo Black ink. I probably should have stamped this ahead of time. It's going to go right at the top. And now we're going to do the calendar part. And what I did is I just measured the calendar and I went a quarter of an inch extra on the outside edges. So this measures three and one eighth by two and a half. 
There is a little adhesive strip on the back of the calendar, but I'm going to add more on the, the other three sides. So if you're giving this for a Christmas gift, I would leave the front on there. And if you're not, you can just pull it off so you can see the calendar portion. Now I need some dimensionals. I can't do a project without dimensionals. Rarely do anyway. And I'm going to glue this right to the front. And I'm going to bring in my clear wink of Stella. And I'm going to color on of those flowers just to make them shimmer and shine just like the ribbon. You can't see it as I'm doing it here, but I'll hold it up to the camera like I did the first one. So I'm just quickly coloring over the flowers. Wouldn't this look good sitting on someone's desk? Okay, now let's see how good I did. Oh yeah, look how shiny that is. You see the sparkle? And now I had... I'm going to do this for both projects. I've had the little uh, purple posy kind of went with the Highland Heather, but now none of these colors really match. So I'm going to bring in my light magenta madness marker. And I'm just going to color three of each size. And because these are alcohol markers, guess what? It's going to stay. Now I go around the edges too. Just try not to color too hard if you do this. You don't want to ruin your tips. That was tips. T-I-P-S. I know my French comes out wrong sometimes. Now we're going to lift these up. Whoops. And glue them in place. Wait a minute. I lost my little... I peeled the, um, the the glue thing right off. Look at what I'm doing. I'm peeling the glue thing. My little paper piercer is ruining these. You know what? It might be my... Um, it might be because I colored too much. They seem to just want to peel off. I think I didn't let them dry enough. Because now they're okay. So I need to add one more up here because what you see up there is just a piece of glue. There we go. Let me see if I can put that in the right spot. I colored too many anyway. So let, let, let them uh, dry up a little bit before you use them. I think I, I still had some wet uh, blends uh, solution and it, it went into the glue part. Okay, so now there's the front. I'm going to flip this over to the inside. But first I'm going to wash my fingers because I did this in my video earlier today too. Because you know what happens when you have inky fingers. You get them all over your project. Okay, now I have a piece of designer paper 1 inch by 4. And what I normally do when I want my easel, I figure out where I want it to stand. So I want it to stand about there, but I have the little rectangle that's going to go above that. So I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. And I see that it's a little too long. And then we're going to do the sentiment. I am going to have to bring the die cutting machine in just to cut out the sentiment. Sometimes I don't trust myself to stamp perfectly straight in a rectangle that's already been pre-cut. I'm going to be using the rectangle stitch dies and I'm using number two from the inside. So let me just move this over and we're going to cut out the rectangle. That's the only die cutting we're doing tonight. Everything else on project number two is all pre-cut. OK, 
Okay, so there's my little rectangle. I'll bring the cards back in. <clears throat> now, in order for this to work as an easel, you have to have height so it'll hold the back piece. So we're going to elevate this one with dimensionals. And you can tell me which one's your favorite one, the Ma Magenta Madness or the Highland Heather. Oh, I know why I needed additional, um, additional dots because I need some for the inside. I'll add those later since I already put my marker away. I'm going to need to color some more for uh, project number two anyway. There's a glue dot just to glue my little ribbon in place. And then there's the little easel card, easel card calendar. Isn't that neat? And when you guys want to send them out, they fold flat for mailing. So it makes a very nice gift. And for those of you that are into craft fairs, this would be good to make for craft fairs also. Okay, so let me get set up for project number two. And I'm actually going to, let me see. I'm going to color these ahead of time this time to let them dry. I just had to count how many I need. One, two, one, two. Okay. And I use the yellow ones. And I'm using actually the dark Calypso Coral. I think I need four of those. And I need two of these. Let me just peek one more time and then two of the big one. Okay, so I'm going to set those aside so they'll dry. Now, are you ready for project number two? Now, this is a project that Lori Austin saw on, I think she told me Pinterest. And let me see, I have um, a little sticky here. I want to dig out because the person that created it it's, it's somebody that's French, and I speak French. You, you guys probably know that by my French accent. Um, so her name is Jen. There's no last name, but Evasion Creative is French. That means creative escape. So this is her website, and there's no last name on her website, so I don't know who to give credit to. So this is a calendar. It's four-sided. You can see it's quite large. It's, it actually uses two eight and a half by 11 sheets of cardstock. What's great about it is it opens up and it sits on your desk so you can face it whatever way you want. Um, it's going to be hard for me to show it to you, but it's four sided. I'll just keep turning. There's all four sides and then it folds flat. And what I did, um, I don't like clutter when I do my projects. So what I did is I did a very busy designer paper, a less busy, and then if you want to go over to the other side, another less busy, and into a busy. So that's how I, I just didn't want it to be too busy when you're looking at two sides. So I'm going to show you how to do this. It's really actually pretty simple. I am using the Ornate Garden Designer Paper. And what I did is I looked at all my swatches and I was able to determine which ones I wanted to use that were not so busy and add in two with a lot of detail. Now the one I'm making tonight is going to be almost the same except I'm using different designer paper. I have a lot of layers to show you. Okay, let me just make some room here. I am still having a little bit of issues with the light in this corner. I, I just worked on my light settings. Hopefully they're better than they were at the, with the workshop. Some of you guys can let me know. Okay, so this is the list of everything that we need. Two pieces, eight and a half by 11 cardstock. I'm using Calypso Coral. We need 12 designer, um, calendar cardstock layers three and a quarter by two and a half this is uh, blushing bride I've got two labels with blushing bride 
and two labels with Whisper White. And let me show you where those labels come from. They come from the Hippo Happiness Bundle. So you can see right here, number two die, and I think this was number two die also. So two of each. And then we need, now one thing that I did that you don't have to do, I'll explain it as I go, but I did not want, since someone's going to be using this for a whole year, you don't want it to end up warping. So what I did is I added another cardstock layer on the inside along with a piece of the designer paper cardboard. So there's actually three layers there and this thing is so sturdy it's not going to warp. So here's my, hold on, let me get grab my little piles. Let me grab, so right here the cardboard, four pieces, ten and a half by three, cardstock, four pieces, ten and three quarter, whoop, there's four there, ten and three quarter by three and three quarter, that's the second one right here. And then your designer paper, I used four different patterns. So these are the patterns I'm using on this one. Again, a busy one, less busy, busy, less busy. And those are ten and three quarter by three and a half. So a lot of layers, but it's going to be so much fun. And then these are just scraps to do my flowers with. So let me go ahead and move all of this stuff away. Now the first thing we're going to do, we're going to score both of the cardstock pieces, 8.5 by 11 on the 8.5 side. We're going to score at 4 and 8 and 4 and 8. That's the only scoring we're going to do. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold on all of the score lines. And you know you guys, if you get calendars that are smaller than what I just showed you, then you can adjust the sizes of your cardstock. But I think it's neat that this is a full sheet of cardstock. So easy. And I will put the measurements up in, in the video comments when the video is done also. Okay, now this is going to be on the inside. So we're going to do the inside first. I'm going to start out with my cardboard. And I'm going to use liquid glue. And again, this is just to make it more sturdy so that it'll last for a whole year. You don't have to do it this way if you don't want to. But I've seen projects before where um, they get warped after a while. Okay, now I'm going to add. Now the reason, I'm going to show you the reason I'm covering this with the same color cardstock. If you were to glue these together and you stand them up, guess what? You can see that white on the inside. That looks horrible. So that's why I opted to cover the white with cardboard, uh, with cardstock. And I made it a little smaller than where the score lines are so that it fits neatly in there. This project was a lot of fun. Um, I did not get the dimensions or anything from this other girl's website. I just created my own just by visually looking at it. Okay, so now we're going to repeat with the white. So you can see once you have everything cut out it's really quick. You can make this masculine theme, you could make this kid friendly, anything. Okay now we're going to go to the two cardstock pieces. I'm kind of cruising through this, it's pretty easy. Okay, so there's, they're all cut, whoops, I just slid that one right off. 
So these are all covered now so that when you stand it up you won't be able to see any of that white. Next step is to bring in tear and tape. And I'm go going right to the edge, the outside edge on both of these. And you could glue everything in the front first if you wanted to, it doesn't matter. And then these are going to be glued together to make the four sided shape. Now one tip that I used, I'm going to bring my scoring tool back in. Here's the one that we just took the strip off of. I'm going to butt it right against there. And then this is going to be nice and straight by doing it that way. Okay, see what I just did? No crooked lines. Okay, here's my second piece I'm going to rip off. And this time I'm actually going to press this one down. And there's your four sided. Piece. Look how quick that was. Very easy. Okay, now we're going to bring in the designer paper. I'm going to start gluing that down. I'm going to see if I can sneak in just one side of the calendar so you guys can see it. I just don't have enough room here. Oh, that's not bad. You can see most of it there. Okay, so we're going to do... Did I do the right side? Yep, I did. I'm just doing liquid glue because it's a lot quicker. So this is going to go right on in the center of the first section. Okay, we have a non-busy. We're going to go to a busy. That's what I call non-busy and busy. Okay, and I did do something wrong and I don't know if you guys noticed. I should have put my tear and tape on the other side so these wouldn't show. But the designer paper is going to cover it. I, I put my um, I put my tear and tape on the wrong side. So now I'm going to move over just one. You can see how it goes from one to the other. Now we need a less busy side. And you could actually use the same designer paper on all four of these if you wanted to. Okay, there's number three. And now we're going to go, let me see what I've got here. Okay, so now I need this side. So on this one, it's just the, the reverse pattern on each side. If you flip it over, you can use the other pattern. Okay, so there's the four sides. Now... Where's my calendar? I know I dug one out. I might have to dig another one out. I might have put it back in the bag. I think I did. Okay, so now what we're going to do is tear the calendar apart. Make sure you know what months you're doing as you do this so you don't mess them up. So maybe just take three out at a time. And we're going to glue these each one of these to a piece of cardstock. So this will be the longest step is just gluing these all to the cardstock pieces. But it's not that bad. But wouldn't these make nice gifts and I bet they would be a good sell at a craft fair too. Of course, not very many places are having craft fairs right now. Okay, now a little tip that I use to do this, just so you don't have to eyeball. I cut a little strip of Whisper White a quarter of an inch wide. I'm going to start at the bottom with March. I'm going to take this little piece. I'm going to line it up with the bottom of my designer paper. I'm going to add the march nice and straight. Move this up. So we're going to go to February. 
it just serves as a little tool to help you line everything up space evenly look at that okay now we go to January I know you guys always like to see tips there's my January so now let me go ahead and start with January now on this one I have the sentiment layer so I'm gonna go ahead and add one of these label shapes and that's gonna go right on top I'm gonna bring one of the white ones in and I am using let me show you what I'm using um, simply thankful for all the good things from country home and then what did I have on the other one you are wonderful from rooted in nature it just had a really nice bold sentiment so that's why I chose I'm gonna go ahead and stamp both of these right now so they'll be done so this one you are wonderful oh I just smudged it see I shouldn't have touched it let me do that one again on the other side there's always two sides to your cardstock okay don't touch number two simply thankful for all the good things leave that alone okay I'm gonna put the ink away so this one is just the sentiment and that one is layered with dimensionals so I hope you guys like the little tip about the quarter inch spacer it works really well and that's gonna go right in the center and then we can move on to number two Nope, I need my spacer so that would be your April May and June so you guys can see I'm cruising right along it's really not that bad to make one of these you just got to make sure you do your um, your calendars in the right order so you don't mess them up so we'll be halfway done with the calendars once I have this row in place so you guys I have all the names uh, all the names are in for those participating in the sampler squares I was so happy to see that okay now in this one we need a daisy I'm gonna cut two of the large I'm actually gonna do four because we need one for the other side also but I am so anxious to see all of the sampler squares I think it's such it's gonna be such a nice project to work on everyone's gonna be different um, every nine people anyway four of those and then we've got the sprig punch we need four of those also oh you guys like the spacer tip I'm glad to hear that okay there's all the punching so now we need April May and June so I'm gonna start with June again we're gonna put the spacer way at the bottom make sure it's not upside down and there's May and then April 
Now this one has the daisy and the way I did my daisies I had two of each size. I'm going to add glue in the center and I'm going to layer two daisies together. And then we can add this one in the middle. And I'm actually going to glue that in place with a dimensional. And then you can just fluff these up once you put them on there. So here's the first daisy. And then we're just going to tuck in some of these sprigs that I cut out. So one's going to go right here. And then let's see if my little gems are going to cooperate. So we're going to use one of the larger ones. Oh yeah, see that's what happened on my first project. I didn't let it dry enough. And I'm going to add some right here also. So one side will be all done. Okay, now we're going to go over one. I'm So I'm just going to open this one and one. You guys are doing good watch uh, having me watch having to watch me do all of these calendar parts. Okay, so let's start out with Whoops, I almost added glue to that instead. So three more. Oh, I like all the hearts, you guys. Isn't that a neat project, though? Whoever thought of this? I don't, and I don't know if the, the girl that, um, the website that I visited, I'm not sure if she's the original creator. Because I usually like to give credit. Whenever I copy someone, I like to give credit to the person. It's just the polite thing to do. Okay, so July, August, September. Our little spacer on the bottom. Whoops, I moved. Okay, there's that one. So I was really bummed that I couldn't go live last night or yesterday afternoon because of the um, the internet outage. We didn't get our internet back till like 10:30 that uh, last night. Come on. Okay, one more on this one. And then we go to the label again, because I'm alternating. Where's my label? There it is. And that's going to go right in the center. Dimensionals on this one. Oh, I keep seeing hearts go by. I love seeing all those hearts. So you guys, I have some really, really nice projects planned for World Card Making Day. I wish I could show them to you, but I'm not going to. I'm going to make you wait. There's that one. And some more bling. The counter, uh, where I'm sitting right now, I have an island, a counter in the middle of my room, and it's it's full. Full of projects. Last one, you guys. And then this is going to also be one with the daisy. So now we've got October and November. November is the best month of the whole year, just to let you know. Now I'm going to take off the little glue things from the back. And then remember the back one has a peel strip, so I'm going to peel that off. So there's December. I should put a little star on my birthday. 
I'm not a turkey this year. Every four or five years, and I'm a turkey because my birthday lands on Thanksgiving, but not this year. Okay. Hey, we're almost at the home stretch. Here's my little strip. And if you guys tuned in late, I'm going to add, um, I'll show the projects again at the end. I might even draw a name for some of these projects. I usually do. And I'll announce tomorrow who gets one of each calendar. One more to go and one more flower. So the only thing to remember, put the tear and tape on the opposite side when you're doing your big, your big layering. Because that seam was in the front and I did not want the seam on the front. Okay, here we go with the last daisy. If you guys don't have the daisy punches, I think those are my most loved punches. I use them so often. Okay, now we need a dimensional. And that's going to go right here. And two sprigs and we're done. Okay, there's one sprig. And, whoops, that one needs to go over a little. There we go. We Oh, wait a minute. I need the flower center. I almost forgot my flower. So this is a good thing to do when you don't have the right color of embellishments. Just use your blends markers to color them. Okay, let me bring the projects back in. Of course, I won't be able to, if I put this up that way, that's not going to show you much. Um, I'm just going to try to, let's see if I can try to prop this one up so you guys can see that it, no, it's not going to stay up, is it? Let me see. I'm going to put a punch right there. So there's that and my other two right here, the easel card. There you go. I hope you enjoyed the projects. I hope it was worth waiting an extra day to see them. And I hope to see you guys all on World Card Making Day on Saturday starting at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Have a good night, everyone.